Ah, good morning, everyone. I really do miss this class and feeling really ripped off that we don't get more time to spend together this semester. But it is what it is, and we will definitely try to make the best of it. So, script writing and trying to get a script formed in order to best express your story ideas. Um, there's the script I gave you to take a look at yesterday. I'm going to pop it open. And this is a script from a television show from back in the 2000s. It was called Firefly. Again, written, directed, created by Joss Whedon, the same guy who did the Avengers original movie the first time they all came together. He's generally considered to be quite a Hollywood whiz kid. He came up through the ranks of the old Roseanne TV show and uh, has been in television and film ever since. So highly, highly recommended that you watch some of his stuff um, just to get an idea of storytelling throughout the 2000s and then the later 2010s. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you have a title page, but it's always a good idea to have a title page. So there you go, the original Firefly first page, listing the television show, Bushwhacked be the name of the episode, the writer of the show, the director of that particular episode, the date of the shooting script, 2002, now, the overall structure. Uh, page one obviously includes, once again, just a repeat of the name of the show and the name of the episode. And then, like I pointed out yesterday in words, what you've got is everything broken down into scenes. Scenes are defined as all the action that takes place in any one location. So, at the start of every scene, you get a scene marker. Number one means scene one. It also helps you to organize your filming. INT is just a short form for interior, a discussion of the fact that there is an emotional difference between being inside of an enclosed location versus being outside exposed to the elements. So in a script, we always make reference to the fact of whether or not we're in an interior shot or whether we're in an exterior shot. Following that, there is a general location. Uh, Serenity is the name of a spaceship. In this particular television show, it's set out in space. There are um, spaceships that fly around the universe and land on various planets. And our main focus is on this group of people who are in a spaceship that is called Serenity. That's the name of the actual ship. Then, following the general location, there is always a more specific location. Where on the ship are we? Are we in somebody's personal quarters? Are we up on the bridge? In this case, we are down in a cargo bay. So the cargo bay is a large open area, usually with a big door that allows you to get in and out from the outside. It's where you load supplies. It's where you bring on passengers. It's where you would create some manner of space in order to store the things that you have to transport from place to place. So you've got yourself a scene number one, an interior exterior indication, a general location uh, indication, and a specific location indication. Uh, as pointed out yesterday, the structure of the actual script is that all information is left justified, right? So we've got this paragraph starting just under the scene information. It's left justified, and it's written in paragraph form. All the dialogue for the actors is centered, along with their names, in all caps, and bolded. When an actor gets their script, the first thing they do is go through with a highlighter, and they highlight all of their own lines. So you need to have the character name, all caps and bolded, so it stands out. And you need to have their dialogue centered under their name, broken up by spaces, so that the actor can get not only an understanding of their own lines, but also a feel for how the dialogue is going to play back and forth with their co-workers, um, co-cast, however you want to suggest. So take a peek, right? We've got um, initially right up at the top, a single word, bang. That's because scripts are meant to evoke emotions. Scripts have absolutely no camera indications, no camera movements. We don't worry about the shot sizes. We don't worry about the technical filming. We worry about conveying emotion to the actors so that they have a better understanding of what the scene is supposed to be and represent. 
actors are all about trying to channel their characters and get a strong understanding of what it is they have to do to help tell the story. So the script really, much like a bedtime story you would tell your little brother or sister, is meant to be exciting. In some cases, especially with movies, the script is meant to excite the person reading it enough to want to make the movie. Scripts get sent out to producers and directors who aren't attached to the project, and it's meant to get them really excited and, wow, this is a great story, and this is really interesting, and, and I'm hooked from the beginning as to what's going on, and I want to know more. So scripts are meant to evoke emotion. That's why we start right out with a description. Bang! Okay, it's meant to grab your attention. Main character, Mal, M-A-L, short for Malcolm, lands hard against a wall. Ouch! He's sweaty, out of breath. We're in the middle of some violence. Now a winded Zoe appears coming to his aid. That Zoe word should have been in all caps right there in the description. Definitely it is down here during her dialogue. Mal, his line, we're dead. Zoe, obviously looking at Mal, talking to Mal. I believe we still have a shot, sir. Mal responds, haven't really learned a terrible lot about losing, have you, Zoe? Zoe responds back, and clearly this is sarcastically. Only since being under your command, sir. Mal, of course, accepting that she knows what she's talking about, responds back with, fair enough. So the initial thing that we see is that Mal and Zoe are in trouble. And that's meant to get your attention to want to read on more, and obviously meant to get the attention in the episode to want viewers to watch more. So we go back to description. She pulls him back into the fray of a basketball game. The reason we capitalized basketball game is because it's kind of a twist on the plot. Nobody knew that this was going to be a basketball game. We obviously thought they were in some real trouble, but they're not. So we just capitalized it so that it stood out. Or some raucous postmodern version of one anyway. Book, which is the name of a character, should be capitalized, joins them as they head back into it. So now we get to start see see a little bit of fun. And also dialogue helps develop the characters, right? Zoe is very much a by-the-book, no-nonsense type person, um, even though she throws in the odd barb. And Mal is Mr. Sarcastic and always trying to have fun, and I guess you'll see that now. Uh, Book is obviously now yelling out in this basketball-type game. I think we got him on the run now. And Mal, Mr. Charming, Mr. Sarcastic, uh, responds with, our cunning strategy of getting our asses plainly whooped must be starting to confound them. Now, you might even begin to see when you're reading the dialogue that the language specifically chosen is, and if this is for lack of a better word, simple language, lower class, almost country hick if you want to, because these travelers on the spaceship are not the elite of society. They are regular people. They are the common blue collar man and woman. And so you're even going to see that through the use of dialogue, we help define the characters by making them say things in a manner that helps the audience to understand or at least characterize who they are, right? Are they rich and educated and highly intelligent? Are they, you know, the, the lower class who can barely afford to be on the ship? Or are they somewhere in the middle? And we're going to get a definite feel for that as we read through the script. Now, as a director writing a script, you have to give lots of description so that there is a strong feel for what's going on. And more description. The teams are Mal, Zoe, Book versus Jane, Kaylee, and Wash. It's a messy free-for-all with everybody pretty much all over the place. Kaylee has the ball. She gets past Mal, passes over to Wash. Wash shoots to a sideways hoop, which hangs high connected to a hoist chain. And he scores. So they're having fun. It's a group of people who work together on a closed environment ship, and now they're blowing off some steam by having some sort of recreation. Mal goes after the ball, but Jane barrels through. That word barrels is specifically chosen. It helps define the action and the character. This guy didn't daintily make his way towards the ball. This guy didn't even um, have the, the, the grace or the body control to do it the way that a, a top athlete might with a whole lot of precision. He barrels through, right? You're talking about, you know, somebody who would be a goon in hockey. Barrels through, steals it, drives past Book, past Zoe, passes the ball back to Wash. Wash dribbles and looks for an opening. 
down to page two. Wash yells out, somebody cover my wife. Again, we've got now a character development. We now know that Wash has a wife and we're gonna find out who that ends up being through the dialogue. The dialogue doesn't explain the basketball game. They're not sitting around saying, I'm going to shoot now and if I score, we're going to win. That's called expository dialogue and it's weaker than trying to allow the other dialogue to support the story rather than just restate it. So Wash yells out, his wife must be on the other team, somebody cover my wife. Jane, our goon, right, the guy who barrels through, he's gonna be your, your slightly shady, not so much lower class character, but definitely he wasn't privileged, comes up with this sarcastic remark. Every time you ain't looking. So not only is Jane's comment sarcastic towards Wash and his wife, but it's also written looking. Not every time you ain't looking, not every time you're not, every time you ain't looking. So it helps develop the characters, helps define them. Jane moves off, Wash to Kaylee. He's dampening my team spirit. So everybody's having a good time. They know it's all in fun and it's just a joke, right? No one's taking it seriously. No one's being offended. And you use dialogue specifically to help the audience understand that. Kaylee's noticed. Simon, who has appeared on the uppermost catwalk, level with River. He's here to watch. Kaylee sees him, grins. Simon smiles. Come on, you don't write that in a script unless there's a reason for it to be pointed out. These are two people who obviously have some history and are smiling. Kaylee liking that Simon's there to watch, Simon smiling at either everybody having fun or specifically down at Kaylee for whatever reason. Kaylee has a spark of an idea. She yells out, give me the ball. Okay, person gives her the ball. She drives forward. Mal tries to intercept, but she sidesteps him. He goes sprawling. Again, another great descriptive word, sprawling, laid out. Somehow Kaylee made a move that totally confounded Mal and made him miss the block or the tackle or the steal, whatever he was trying to do. Kaylee, intensely aware of the handsome doctor watching, shoots and scores. Mal says to Zoe, don't suppose I could threaten to put her off the boat should she do that again. Now again in this show, they're calling their spaceship a boat. The same way a ship at sea would have no place to drop off characters, a spaceship out in space doesn't really have any place to drop off characters. So again, Mal is being funny, being coy. Zoe says, you could, sir, but, uh, oh, good, you're not my reading. You could, sir, but she's the only one who know how, knows how anything works. Again, more character development. Your characters aren't stating what's going on in the scene. They're stating facts and information about the people in the scene. And that will help you to better understand the action that is to come. Mal, there's a point. The bash and crash of the game resumes. Jane gets the ball, passes it, but Zoe intercepts. It's keep away time. Inara, a new character, all capitals, and it should be bolded, emerges from her shuttle, smiles at all the camaraderie. Wash scoops up the ball. Zoe is hot on him. Kaylee chatter, clatters to the upper levels. Wash passes over Zoe's head. Kaylee catches the ball. Mer ugh, Mal tears off after her, coming up the steps, gonna get her from behind. Kaylee's yelling out, ah, Jane. Jane runs up, gets under Kaylee, and climbs up to, uh, and she climbs onto his shoulders. Uh, she just escapes Mal. And as she rides Jane's shoulders towards the hoop, she sees Anara moving along the catwalk. Ugh, catwalk. Simon says, hello. Kaylee shoots, misses badly. The rest of the players dive in. It's chaos again. As above all of them, Anara stands next to Simon and they both watch the game. Anara comments, who's winning? Simon, I can't really tell. They don't seem to be playing by any civilized rules that I know. And Anara comments, well, this far out in space, you kind of make your own rules. Okay, so a script is used not only to tell the story, but to advance the characters, to let you know more about them, to let you know about their interactions. And that's why we use scripts and that's why we write them in a manner that allows us as the storyteller to try and get across to a potential director or a potential producer or a potential investor what our story is, why we feel it's worth telling, 
and what it's going to take in order to tell that story correctly. So feel free if you didn't yesterday to read over the script, but to read through it again. If you go on to Netflix, Firefly used to be on Netflix, might still be. You can look up this episode and you can watch it. And you can see how the writer writes the script, then the director and the show's producers interpret it to try and give it life. And then they, they make some changes. They don't necessarily follow every line of the script verbatim, but they try to. And they have to then envision how they're going to film and show the information and description that is written within the script. There's not a lot of information yet about what their costumes are like or what their hair is like or the size or shape of them. That's all going to come later in the process. But first up, we try and write a script. Okay, so read through the script if you haven't already. If you get a chance over the weekend, try and find Firefly on Netflix and watch this particular episode. It is genuinely considered to be one of those TV shows that has such a cult following that um, it was far better written, directed, filmed than, than the ratings that it got when it was aired on television. And so it's considered to be one of those absolute classic gems that very few people know about. All right. Have a good Friday. Thanks for listening. And um, spend some time on the weekend just relaxing, maybe watching a little bit of entertainment and thinking about all the things we've learned about in class and how someone made a deliberate decision every time the camera gets pointed to film something. Okay. Talk to you guys on Monday.